Okay, great. Okay, well, I think we're going to get started. There may be some other people joining as we um, come along. Please put in the chat where you're from. And um, very happy to have so many people this morning, this evening, whatever, um, on, the, on this call. Um, the purpose of the call is to brief you on our Global Life Sciences Healthcare Entrepreneurship course that features um, people from Silicon Valley teaching the class. And it's all online. I'll be telling you about it. And we're going to be hearing um, also from an entrepreneur. Some of you are, will be very interested, or presumably all of you, in his story about how he got out of this class and um, moved along in his entrepreneurial pathway. So we'll be doing that as well. Um, let me make sure I can forward this. Let's see, yeah. Okay, so let, let me start by just telling you a bit about who I am and um, what I'm doing here. I'm the Managing Director of Entrepreneurship at UCSF, and some of you from other countries may not know who UCSF is. We're University of California in San Francisco. We're a sister campus to Berkeley, which everyone's heard of, I'm sure. Uh, we are a graduate institution only, and we only do life sciences and healthcare. So we train physicians and nurses and dentists and um, scientific researchers, and I'm sure I'm leaving people out. Um, we are a top tier institution. We're ranked number 11 in the world by Financial Times, uh, which is pretty amazing because we're so small relative to many other schools. So um, UCSF is, uh, is how I come to this class. I'm course director and also senior lecturer. And um, so just a few, a few pictures to show where I came from. I, I guess I've always been an entrepreneur. So while I, my lemonade stand didn't look as good as this one, um, I did sell lemonade in the front of, of my house. And that's something that in the U.S., a lot of us start out with, very accepted. And um, as things have progressed, it's been very clear that I've also taken an entrepreneurial path. Um, I also, um, well, I spent 10 years in tech and didn't find it all that interesting. So then I found biotech in Boston in the um, 90s. And my first company was called Vertex Pharmaceuticals, and they had this outrageous goal to become a billion-dollar company based on, on their research. And guess what? They, they are. <laughs> They're more than a billion dollars. So um, it was. Uh, this is the book that was written by a New York Times writer about it, and, and I was there during that period. And since then, I've, um, I've been completely life sciences and healthcare. I speak around the world. I mentor. I judge startups. Um, I've done a lot of different kinds of things in our world. And just to summarize some of those, startup and early stage expert. Uh, I'm from the private sector, so I'm not an academic. My career before UCSF was all private sector life sciences companies. And my specialties have been business development, strategy, and management. I've also done some entrepreneurship policy. And uh, for those of you who know what i is, the innovation core that was started by the NSF, I created the NIH model for i for life sciences. Um, I was published in Nature in this January, which was really quite a thrill, um, and not on my research, because I don't do research, but on entrepreneurship thoughts. I presented for the State Department in the White House. I'm an advisor to the Bio Investor Forum and speak for bio frequently. That's our industry trade group and I judge mentor and so on. So um, I'm the person putting this course together, doing some teaching, doing a lot of moderating and um, very excited to be telling you about it. So the plan today is I'm going to give you a description of the course. We have a couple of alumni on the call uh, who I'll, I'll introduce, and they're going to tell you what their perspectives are, because it's really useful to hear from somebody who's been in the class. And then we have the entrepreneur story, which will be on video because our entrepreneur is on an airplane right now. 
And we really want to encourage Q&A. So if you have a question as we go along, just put it in the chat. And uh, Inder Takar, who is our uh, program coordinator, is going to be letting me know when there are questions and we'll stop and answer them. So this is meant to be an interactive session for you to learn and for us to answer. And um, let me jump right into it. So first to introduce our global course alumni and uh, Charles and Daruka, I can't see you right now on the screen, but please make sure your camera's on and put your hand up or wave or something so everyone can see you. Um, so they are gonna be speaking about their experience in a little bit. Um, and so we thank you gentlemen for being here. Um, the Entrepreneur's Story is by Vineeth Johnson. He's founder CEO of a company called Sophos. It's a really embryonic company, and he started it after going through the first cohort of this class. So um, I'm sure you'll find what he has to say interesting. So what is this all about? So our value proposition, which is a term that you will learn in the class if you don't already know it, is that we're an entrepreneurship community. We're really more than a course. It's a community where professionals learn about science and medical startups, and we teach it through the Silicon Valley lens. You're taught by practitioners. We have no academics in the faculty guest list. These are all people who are out there doing things. Um, how we're different from other courses you might encounter well, you know, this this quote actually comes from our students who told me exactly this, that this is more than a course. Really, we've created community around it. So it will stay with you and not just through the course, but afterwards. So we have a pure life sciences healthcare startup focus. There are many entrepreneurship courses around, but they're not life sciences and healthcare. Um, again, the Silicon Valley practitioners are the guest lecturers. So we have the uh, lens of the most successful ecosystem in the world that are gonna tell you how we do it here. It's a very high touch course. So it's not one, and those of you who came here on time know that I asked you to turn on your cameras and introduce yourself. That's the way I run the class. It's very interactive. Um, you can't be interactive with cameras off. So if you wanna just sit back and take notes, it's really probably not the right class for you. Uh, we have small groups in addition to big lectures, and I hold office hours. I try to meet with as many of you as are interested and can during the class to find out how we can be helpful and, and what your particular situation is. Um, another reason we're different is we have the mindset and culture of Silicon Valley, and the culture is really important. It's not something that everybody talks about, but it's what makes us so successful, not just that we come up with technology ideas, but that we actually have a way to vet them, to communicate them, to help each other, um, and to network. So it's, um, it's a very open culture. And we have an active global alumni network. So um, now we have over 400 alumni having started the class just in September, 2020. Uh, they're from 33 countries around the world, and we try to keep everybody engaged. So why should you enroll in this? Well, um, great content. We'll tell you about that, the culture we talked about, and the network. So what, some of the things you're going to be able to do is evaluate if your idea can be a business. So it's one thing to have a science <clears throat> scientific idea or a healthcare idea. Many of you have those but it's a way different thing to know if you can commercialize something. And we're gonna teach you how to, how to assess that. You'll also understand business concepts and how we speak about things. And so I'm presuming not many of you on this call um, have a business background. And that's the case certainly at UCSF with um, basically everybody at UCSF is either a scientist or a clinician. Um, and haven't had a lot of exposure to business. And without business, you cannot be successful in commercialization. So we're gonna teach you about these things. And also, how do you gain investment? So I think it's pretty common that people say, well, we, I've got this great idea and I'm gonna go for venture capital. And that's really not appropriate for 
probably 90 plus percent of people with ideas, at least not at the beginning. And we're gonna teach you about what it takes to gain significant investment. You'll also absorb the startup culture in Silicon Valley just by um, participating in these lectures, listening to our lecturers, being in the small groups that we run. Uh, you will understand the culture from the inside out. And then you're joining a global network of people like you who are interested in entrepreneurship. So who takes the course? Lots of different kinds of people, of course, entrepreneurs, but not everybody's an entrepreneur in the class. Uh, we have potential entrepreneurs, people who are thinking about it, academics, scientific researchers, physicians, people who run parts of ecosystems, both in the United States and, and in other countries. Uh, technology transfer heads, people who are trying to transfer uh, intellectual property out of the university. Corporate managers, we've had pharmaceutical companies, uh, executives in charge of innovation, startup advisors and consultants, governments from parts of the world. Um, and we've had, actually had some people from US government as well and investors. So it's a very diverse group of people and uh, very exciting to hear different perspectives. Okay, so a quick rundown of some of the things we're gonna be covering. Uh, this is Dave Hansel is going to kick it off. He's a serial investor and entrepreneur, sorry, serial entrepreneur investor. He's actually both. Um, he says, if wisdom is conscious learning from experience and my goal is to help companies only make original mistakes, he is very experienced and he's probably seen every everything, both positive and negative, um, that could be done in a company. And so it's great to have Dave share his experiences and teach you how to know if your idea could be a business. Some of you may know Steve Blank. Um, he is known for having started Lean Launchpad, which is um, something that the US government has picked up in Innovation Corps or i -Corps for short. He created the NSF National Science Foundation i -Corps, And I worked with Steve to create the first uh, I, Lean Launchpad class that NIH picked up because it was life sciences. He lectures at Stanford and um, he's a really interesting guy. He's all over the internet um, and we're lucky to have him give a lecture for our class and you can ask him questions directly. Um, I get to teach a little bit. I'm going to teach business models and this is the question of how do you make money out of whatever you're doing? And if you can't answer that, it doesn't really matter how cool the science and technology is. It's not going to be a business. Teresa Toller um, does team building. She has worked for many VCs in filling out the teams of their portfolio companies. Right now, she's with a company called Graphite Bio, and she has placed every kind of person in uh, a life sciences or healthcare um, company. She has great advice for us about what to look for, how to recruit, uh, how to make sure there's a good match and, and where to find, find co-founders, et cetera. Uh, Vern Norville is a great, uh, great attorney, intellectual property attorney. He's extremely well known around Silicon Valley. He's with a well-known law firm called Wilson Sonsini, which by the way, was the first law firm for Apple and Google. Um, he is a life sciences guy. He um, has, is really sharp about explaining what a successful business or IP strategy is in this business and is very generous with giving us his time. Uh, we have two people to do FDA regulatory. So while many of you in, are in different countries um, where you don't have an FDA, every country looks at FDA as a model. So you might as well understand how it works here because you're gonna see that in your country as well. And for those of you who are here, um, it's really important to understand from the viewpoint of FDA people, how it all works. And um, Telba and Ilan are going to be handling that lecture. Um, Eyal Gurian is uh, an insurance executive. He is going to explain the healthcare system here. And here, insurance is extremely important in reimbursing for products and services. And he's going to explain how to get your innovations in front of an insurer and how it all works. 
Um, we're going to do partnering with two great people with different perspectives. Leslie is a J and J Innovation uh, with a very senior position, and she's going to talk about how J and J um, does partnering. It's largely therapeutics, but not completely. Whereas Beth even though she's the CEO of a, a therapeutics company, well, maybe it's devices, um, she comes in the digital health world and she'll explain how it works in digital health. And then we had angel investors. Uh, Darren Cook is from a, a well-known group here called Life Science Angels. They actually invest and syndicate with in angels around the country. So he's going to share that perspective. And Ranjan Nag. Uh, does many things. He's an investor himself, uh, a venture capitalist. And he's also director of the MIT Alumni Angels, which will uh, present companies that don't necessarily come from MIT. Um, uh, the, what's the word I'm looking for? From, from the MIT ecosystem. And he has a very different approach, um, does a lot of life science, and he's going to share that with us. We have two venture capitalists. Jorge Candi is a general partner at a very well-known firm called Andresen Horowitz. Um, he's in the bio part of that, and he's general partner. So he's going to share his perspectives. And Leon Chen with the Colin Group has a different approach to venture capital. He does a lot of venture creation, which is now uh, a trend here and, and other parts of the world as well, which is to actually build a company themselves uh, from intellectual property that comes out of universities. Um, Ryan Howard is a serial entrepreneur, and he gives a great talk about how you can protect yourself as a founder uh, to keep the investors from, um, from slipping in really in, um, um, I guess the way to say it is clauses that are not helpful to you as a founder that favor investors and not the company and yourself. So he has great advice as to how you can protect yourself. And then we'll have uh, some entrepreneur stories. I'm going to run through these very quickly just to see this. Um, Kevin started a company called Cartography. He raised $57 million in a Series A, which is the first venture capital series. Um, Stanford PhD went straight into becoming CEO of this company and has persisted over time, which is quite amazing. Um, Sri Kasuri also has a different kind of background. He was an academic. He became an entrepreneur, raised $80 million in the second series, Series B, and has a collaboration with Bristol Myers Squibb. So he has a different kind of pathway. We'll hear from them. And then we have small discussion groups, which are led by mentors who come from the different sectors. So our mentors are serial entrepreneurs. They're CEOs, investors, business development, consultants, and so on. And they will lead these discussion groups to help break down some of this information for the sector you're interested in. So if you're a diagnostics person and you don't really care about how FDA does digital health, then the diagnostics group is the one for you and you will get, um, get some, some really great information about how it works there. That's the concept. And these groups run a few times during the course and, and are a great way to meet other people as well who have an interest. Uh, we have a discussion group on entrepreneurial war stories. So Brian Feth, who's the CEO himself, brings in entrepreneurs he knows to tell more about how they started companies, what was challenging, what wasn't, and so on. And then we have a great alumni network, uh, six continents, 33 countries now, an active community. And we have virtual and in-person meetups. Uh, this was our alumni meetup at UCSF during uh, JP Morgan Healthcare Week. If you're familiar with that, it's a, probably the world's biggest life science investor conference. And it happens in early January. This is a get together we had at UCSF. And we had people there from China, from Canada, I think I'm missing one other country, Singapore, uh, as well as a lot of people from local and from around the United States. And this was really a great event. And then we were at the bio conference in Boston a couple of months ago and had a, a dinner with some of the alums. So we try to keep it an active network. Uh, when I travel around or people come here, I'm always happy to get together and get updated and, and see how we can be helpful. 
Okay, a couple of quotes, life-changing experience. Uh, this is from Cecilia Sui, who's in Hong Kong, and she runs part of the ecosystem there, how to understand, wants to, anyone who wants to understand how life science startups operate in Silicon Valley, she said. Um, Aaron Su is from Singapore, said it's a rare gem, and uh, we're, we're happy to have Aaron, who would get up in the, literally in the middle of the night to um, to tell us um, about what he was interested in and to listen to the, the lectures. Um, Donalo Gorman has now started a company called Identify Her. He's from Dublin and he has great, great hopes for all of us. So 94% um, would recommend the class. Those who wouldn't, I think were busy in the ER and couldn't come <laughs> very much, that was it. Um, why take it? Lots of reasons. And what, what I'm going to do right now, though, because uh, time is short, is I, I just want to um, turn to a couple of our alumni and have them uh, speak to their perspective. And I'm going to start with Daruka Mahadevan, who is an MD, PhD, um, who, um, Daruka, please, why don't you introduce yourself and give us, um, give us some perspectives. And again, we're happy to take questions in the chat. Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Uh, and um, so I am a, a medical oncologist. Uh, I'm the division chief for uh, hematology medical oncology at UT Health in San Antonio. Uh, and I got introduced to this course by my dean of the medical school, uh, who actually is a co-founder of a company in Texas. And I'm running his phase one clinical trial, his first molecule that he has. So that was the major reason I actually wanted to uh, come on this course, I thoroughly enjoyed this course. As Stephanie actually mentioned, all of the components of this course um, opened my eyes to a different world that I had not seen before. Only really thought about it and just some, you know, dabbling in uh, in the lab and trying to get molecules patented and that kind of stuff was I was doing that. But I think I truly really didn't understand the 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 complexity and the innovation that's needed to go into this in a big way. I mean, this is a full-time job in my mind, but I can't leave my day job. <laughs> I got to keep my day job and do this. Uh, and uh, and I, I got all the inspiration and the insights how I should go about uh, becoming an entrepreneur, building really good teams, teams that can really bring in the money and help develop uh, this, uh, whatever the innovation that you have. So that's what uh, I learned a lot. I, learned, I totally enjoyed this course. And also the, also the interactions we had with the different members was very, very interesting and important, but couldn't make much time for it as busy clinician. Uh, I wish I could have spent more time, but I did the best I could with the time I was given. So thank you, Stephanie. Well, thanks, Daruk. And, that, and that's an important point to make is a lot of people have very very absorbing full-time jobs <clears throat> and can't always come to class. We do record everything um, so that you can watch it when you're you know, not on, on service or, or in the lab or whatever. Um, but people you know, take what they can out of it. They don't, there's no requirement to come to a certain number of classes or, or whatever. And Darika, do you have um, at this point one idea you're working on or, or multiple things and do you have people um, that you work with who might be able to help you start a, a company? So, yeah, I did have a company which I closed recently because we really didn't have a good team. Probably a good thing. Uh, it was going on for like 15 years, but there, there was no, no real passion in there from the rest of the team, unfortunately. I only had the passion because I was a scientist and wanted to get things done. So what I'm doing now is I'm working on antibody uh, targeting pancreatic cancer, but I'm making bispecifics now from the original molecule. And, I'm, uh, and that has been approved. Uh, I'm working with a company actually to come up with that uh, um, the product and we'll check it in the lab. And UT Health uh, has agreed to this. Uh, so at some point, if things work out, we'll, we'll get a patent out of it and try to commercialize it uh, the way that you actually described in your course. So, and there are other molecules as well, but that's my first molecule as an antibody. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, excited to stay tuned to how this how this works out. You're working in an important area. Um, any questions for Daruka? Who's going to have to leave in a couple of minutes? Anyone? Um, you can raise your hand or put a question in the chat. What would you like to do? We're just going to have to 
say going, going, gone, like an auction. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't see anything right away. Daruka, thank you for joining us this morning and um, hope to see you soon. All right. And and let me call on uh, Charles France. Who's okay, thanks very much. Someplace. Good luck, everyone. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Daruka. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. -bye. Okay. bye. Uh, let's see. Okay, I see a question from Min. Thank you, Min, for that question. I'll answer that before um, Charles makes some comments. So the class is over 10 weeks. Uh, it's a couple of hours a week for the lecture. And you can choose to do anything you want to. So if you have very limited time, I suggest just the lectures. But if you can contribute a little more time to it, we have these small groups that meet for an hour, not every week, but um, they're, they're laid out on the schedule. So you can do a small group as well. And um, you can do office hours if you want to, which is the individual uh, mentoring that I will do. So um, yeah, it's up to you. It's really make it work for you, for whatever your situation is. So Min, did that answer it for you? Can't see you on the screen. Um, okay, I'm hoping yes. Charles, hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, could why don't you um, introduce yourself and talk a little bit about the class? Well, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. This class was incredibly informative and helpful. It was a really eye-opening experience. I'm a professor of pharmacology and psychiatry at the University of Texas Health Science Center, San Antonio, same institution as Daruka, and had never really thought about anything in this world at all until a few years ago when a molecule fell into my lap, which seems to have incredible commercial uh, promise. Uh, so taking this course, we were encouraged to take this course, and, and it was truly insightful. Uh, Stephanie knows all the movers and shakers from scientists to attorneys, business experts, as the kinds of people she's talked to you about. It's really a broad stroke of, of people from Silicon Valley. And what I found interesting about it is that most of, all of them, I guess, are very successful, although they'll tell you their horror stories as well, but, but they're really giving back to the community. They're, they're spending time in this course to try to help people like me, who knew nothing about nothing at the beginning of this course, other than I had something that had to move forward. So having, heard them talk about their successes and failures, I think was really insightful. The war stories are a lot of fun because you get to hear about the way individuals started up their companies. Uh, and really at the core of this course is, is Stephanie. I'm, I'm not just blowing her horn. She's an incredible person. She's incredibly helpful. And she knows people, she travels the world. She has great connections. And it's not just this course. I spent one-on-one -on -one time with her in her, after, in her uh, uh, office hours. Incredibly helpful again. And, you know, it's been a year since I've taken this course. I communicate with her uh, relatively frequently. She has pointed me in the directions of potential partners and investors, and she's just taken an interest in what we're doing. So it, for me, it was an eye-opening experience. I'm not sure it's convinced me to be an entrepreneur, but it certainly has convinced me of what it takes to be an entrepreneur and how I need to build a team and turn my idea over to people who really know this, this world better than I do. So very, very helpful. Well, thank you, Charles. I appreciate the, the compliments. And, and it's been a pleasure to work with you, try to help you because um, you've got such a great attitude about the whole thing. So um, I think it works in both ways. <clears throat> um, you know, Charles is um, very interested in starting a company, although, as he said, he he's faculty. He's probably not going to leave the university. We'll see how this goes. Um, that's probably similar, similar to many of you with faculty positions. Um, but it's still very important to learn about what it takes to start a company. I've unfortunately seen too many faculty and other people who've never done the work that we're going to have you do in terms of understanding what it takes. And they spend years and years on something that they're passionate about scientifically, and it turns out to have no market and can't be sold and it's just really disappointing. So this is um, this is a great way to figure out how if you're spending your time effectively and can really move things ahead if you want to. Um, any questions? I'm pausing here to see who might have questions, I, and I will go through the class logistics in a couple of minutes to um, make sure that everybody is up to speed on that. Uh, any questions from the group? Um, okay, well, please 
again, put them in the chat and I'll keep moving on. So lots of reasons to take this class. You don't have to be doing a startup, um, although many people are at least considering it. They Some people have come because they're doing one and they want to make sure that they know how it's done in Silicon Valley, sort of a benchmark for them. Um, understanding what our culture is, we talked that, about that. Figuring out if you fit with a startup. Um, so not everybody has that entrepreneurial personality, and we'll talk a bit about that. Um, you know, you, maybe you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. Um, maybe it's a you should pass along your great idea to people who have that personality and, and that drive. And it will help you figure out if if you're the right fit. Also, um, there are people who are want to invest in early stage ventures, and this gives you great visibility into what to look for and how to assess those that you find. And then again, joining joining the network. Um, let's see, Sandeep, or I guess this is Mrs. Sandeep. Um, uh, would you just ask out? Oh, out loud what your question is so we can answer it out loud. Out loud. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. My name is Pervy and uh, my husband and I have started a small biotech company and I just was wondering, do we have to be a UCSF affiliate? Yeah, thanks for that question. Not at all. Um, we This is a global class. We have people who are affiliated by, uh, they are working for the national health system in the UK or uh, they have no affiliation whatsoever, universities all around the world, just individuals who have found the class through an internet search or whatever. We welcome everybody. Uh, we feel that the more diverse the group is, the better this class is going to be. So it is totally open. There's no application necessary. You just sign up and come. Thank um, you. Yeah, of course. Thank you for the question. And Min, same question, basically, right? You want to just repeat what, what you said? Sorry, you're on mute. Or at least I can't hear you. <laughs> well, Min's figuring that out. Okay, she's trying. She, I, I guess for whatever reason, I can't hear her. But she asked, you know, she's from Stanford. Is that okay? It's absolutely totally okay. Um, and I love having people from Stanford because you guys have such a vibrant uh, entrepreneurial community there. And um, I'm sure you'd be able to contribute well to a class like this. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Oh, good. You just went on on audio. <laughs> Whatever you did worked. <laughs> Something's wrong. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can totally hear you now. Yeah. Um, just a quick look at who our partners are. We have people from um, every place, pretty much, uh, who have interested in the course, have sent people there. Um, have supported us one way or another. And uh, I'm trying to get, okay, so here are some key facts which you've been asking about. Um, we're starting on October 4th. The deadline to sign up is September 6th. You can do that simply on Eventbrite with a credit card. Um, it's a 10 week class, two hours a week, two plus hours if you do some of the other small groups besides the lectures. Their online lectures, small groups, and office hours are the offer. We record the lectures, not the small groups, and not office hours. Because we have a global audience, 50% of the classes are targeted to good times for Europeans and 50% good times for Asians. And as I said, we've always had some people who have gotten up at ridiculous times in their, in their world, 2 a.m., to come to class just because they want to, even though it's recorded. There's no application and the tuition is 1500, which is probably um, a third less or a, a fourth really of what other major uh, programs cost. So it's it's quite cost effective for you and um, you know, it's hopefully something that's not a barrier. And this is our um, fifth cohort link so you can read more about it and find a way to register if you decide you want to. And I am going to pause here for questions and see if we've covered what people want to know because we're then going to uh, run that video from our entrepreneur. And I know some of you are here just to, to hear what he has to say. So 
any questions in the chat. Very helpful when people have questions. Anything that was unclear, any clarification? Um, okay, I'm looking at something in the chat. Great, okay, William, do I have a list of the 10 lectures? Not precisely, but if you look in the brochure, it will list the different topic areas. And so that's what the lectures are about. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Should have had you asked that question. We've got the course website in here. All right, um, let's roll the uh, video. Uh, can you do that, Ender, from your side? Yes, I, I think we have a, one additional question. Oh, raise hand. Oh, great, thank you. Okay, uh, Ray Henney, can you ask your question? Hi. Hi. Yes. Uh, sorry, I was driving last time. So okay. Turn the no problem. Um, is there a good time that you recommend for someone to take this course in terms of like you have an idea or you're like halfway in your product or like you how you're figuring out your team those um steps in a yeah yeah the earlier the better you know and the, re the reason why is if you have an idea um you don't want to spend a lot of time working on perfecting the idea or doing two more experiments or whatever if it's never going to be able to see the light of day because you don't have the opportunity. There's, you know, it's something that people won't invest in. It's something that insurance won't reimburse. So why waste your time on an idea that may not be able to be commercialized if that's your goal? Um, you know, and, and that's not a bad, it's actually a very good thing to find that out early because then you can turn your efforts to another idea. If that's what your passion is, is to bring something out into the world. Um, and then, you know, you'll have learned how to test things out. So, you know, people often go through many ideas, um, that it's certainly true in, in the, uh, in the consumer world where, you know, a lot of our, our big, um, big successful tech company didn't start out doing what they do. They started out doing something completely different and then pivoted as they got information from the marketplace. So I would encourage you to come early. What, what, what stage are you at? Idea. Uh, idea halfway in the product. Like the product is not ready. I cannot, it's like the prototype is half ready. Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah. you know, I, bench, I think bench stuff product. <laughs> okay. Well, I think the mistake people make is they feel they have to have a prototype before they can test something. And that's just not the case. And, and we'll, we'll teach you why and how, um, it. but it, it's a big holdup for people. It's like, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready, but you really are ready. And um, you don't have to have a prototype. So okay. thank you. Yeah. yeah glad you asked the question. You. Where, where are you located? Rihanna? Are, are you in, uh, where do you work? Yes, I'm in Silicon Valley. Super okay, deep. excellent. Okay, yeah. good. Any other questions right now? Thank you for the question. Um, okay, wait, two new messages. I'm excited to see that. Uh, Charles, thank you for your comment. Um, and let's see. Okay, I've got Sandeep's comment. Great. Okay, so... Um, if we're ready, let's let's roll the the video. Okay, uh, Stephanie, can you uh, stop sharing your screen? And sure. I... And and yeah. Okay. So while he's setting that up, um, just to tell you, Beneath Johnson, someone I've known for several years, back when he was at UCSF, uh, he is an engineer. He's not an MD or PhD. Uh, very always very interested in entrepreneurship and uh, took the course and then was on his way. So, okay, Inder, go ahead. Okay. You and um, sorry, you're not able to be live in this group today, but I know you're on an airplane. So um, thanks for, thanks being available to do a, a little chat about your entrepreneurial journey. And um, I, just by way of quick introduction to the group here, um, I've known Beneath for several years. He was in the first cohort of the global class, which was the experimental cohort, and um, he survived it <laughs> and went on to do great things. 
He was a surgical innovation engineer. That's a group we have at UCSF. Um, and so that's like a staff position here rather than faculty. So with an engineering background, he's also been a researcher in neuromodulation with one of our very famous um, PIs named Adam Gazali, who started a company. And uh, he trained as an engineer in India before all that. So after class, he got into a really renowned accelerator and very competitive in Silicon Valley called Y Combinator. And from that formed his company. So I'm gonna let him say more about all this, but just that's the brief background and tell us um, who you are and what you're doing and give us that um, elevator pitch about your company. Absolutely, thank you, Stephanie. And it's always a pleasure to come back. Uh, to to your class and and and, and um, apologize for not being there in person, uh, but my, uh, I am the founder of Sophus. Sophus is a um, uh, we we basically build software to automate uh, medical coding, um, basically converting medical documentation into ICD-10 CM picks and uh, CPT codes for providers and for people who do not know uh, much about the billing world, it's essentially um, codes are the language which ins health insurance companies speak to uh, in order to reimburse their dollar amounts for particular procedures which are done in hospitals. So what's the problem? Why, why doesn't it work well now? Why do we need AI? So a majority of the industry, uh, even today, is, is run manually. So if you look at coding on the whole, um, you have um, all of these providers have billing teams which have um, internal coding teams or um, many, many of these hospitals actually outsource their medical coding to third party billing companies. And um, a lot of this coding is done manually today. And um, coders, um, you know, with who, who they, they, they usually spend a lot of time trying to, depending on and how, how long, how big the claim is, spend a lot of time trying to go through the claim, uh, go refer um, your CPD notebooks as dictionaries, which are pretty error prone and also, um, you know, using software, you're able to convert uh, and process more of these claims in a more timely manner. So essentially we are uh, selling an AI assistant software to these coders so that they can process more claims um, and also um, accurately code their claims. Uh, more efficiently than without using software. So, how did you come up with this idea? This isn't um, this isn't surgical uh, engineering. This isn't. Um, that I can't tie it to anything I I see in your background. So, tell me how it happened. Yeah, this is you know something which we actually built it this um, uh, this product about six months ago, and um, uh, you know. I, when, when I left UCSF Surgical Innovations, we were working on an entirely different product, if you remember, and we spoke about this as well. Um, but at the moment in 2023, um, you know, when, when, when I spent a lot of time trying to understand, okay, what are uh, um, enterprises in the healthcare world uh, most motivated for uh, when it comes to um, paying money and solving the problem? And I spent a lot of time talking to healthcare leaders and also going around um, conferences, and I found there were two things which was the most pressing. Um, one was, of course, staffing. Uh, clinical staffing was a huge problem across the, across the board. And then uh, the second problem was automating back-end tasks at the office. And so this was billing, this was, you know, trying to get their prior authorizations. Um, and, uh, you know, once I deep dive within the billing world, um, again, that's a very traditional um, uh, industry. And um, coding is sort of the heart of, uh, of the whole revenue cycle management. And so if you look at the whole RCM pipeline, there are different points in which there is a lot of problems and leakage. And um, with software, and also given the fact that um, there are many advancements in generative AI in, in, in the last few months, uh, we thought it'd be a, a very timely, uh, a timely standpoint for us to get into the industry and actually be working on this product. So I, I want to go back to something you just said. You said you went around and talked to people. Yes. This is this is what we tell you to do. <laughs> did you pick this up in class or where did you learn how to do this? <laughs> well, the first time I heard this was definitely in class, in your class, definitely. And so, uh, you know, we, in fact, I think we had an entire class about um, users and trying to talk to customers and trying to validate the idea first. 
And uh, you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, you actually emphasized a lot on like making sure, you know, hey, try building solutions to actual problems. Don't don't try building products for problems that don't exist, like, or don't try to create a problem. And so uh, I think that was the the whole process of us doing that was very um, imperative for us to, okay, realize that, okay, this is a, a problem, not just a problem, but a problem where, you know, it's important enough that people want to pay you money and get, get this problem solved. And so uh, huge steps. So absolutely spend a lot of time talking to your users, uh, take, take up the phone, go, go email those former colleagues of yours. And, um, and it, it's important to understand the, the, uh, the depth of the problem. And also uh, if there are your customers are motivated enough to pay money to solve the problem. Yeah, critical, critical questions. Um, so let's just go back for a, a minute, even further back. So why did you want to do something entrepreneurial? What is it that, what is it that caused you to say, look, I, I've worked for that big organization, UCSF, you know, that's not where I want to spend my life. I want to start something. What, tell us about that. Well, I, I, enjoyed I honestly like I didn't leave to go start my own thing because I didn't enjoy my work at UCSF. UCSF is you know probably like the, one of the best things that has happened in my life so far. It's an amazing place and I met some really really smart people. Um, I think what I really enjoyed at UCSF is um, picking problems and then diving deeper into it um, and uh, for me to set out on a path of entrepreneurship you get uh, you need to get really, really um, sort of you know, crazy about a particular problem. Like you need to be really passionate about this one particular problem saying that, hey, of course, in a, in a day job, when you work at a bigger corporation or a big biotech company, you have multiple projects you're working on, you know, or several uh, different multiple teams. Um, I think the first thing that set me off on like, oh, um, let's, let's go out and try to solve this was uh, being fixated on one problem, which I found was, okay, this is a problem which a lot of people across healthcare were facing, and I was passionate enough to be focused exactly on that one particular problem. And uh, entrepreneurship, especially in healthcare, uh, you have to be passionate because it is hard. It is, it is difficult to make money in the early stages. So you will, the only thing which is going to drive you is having passion for solving that problem. And so for me, and I was just fortunate enough that uh, at, at that point, that I was fixated on this particular problem, which today I'm not working on, but it it really you know sort of catapulted me into like going out there and seeing okay where else does this problem exist? How can I build a solution? And uh, you know when we were fortunate enough to be uh, accepted into YC at the same time, and so that you know sort of really helped me uh, sort of was act as a launch pad for me to start my entrepreneurship career. Um, and this is also around the same time where I took your class for the first time, and so you know. It was all everything was happening in the business just a few months and so in, in about four months i went from working at ucsf to starting my own company so um really really grateful for how things turned out great so so what is it that you like about having your own company what how does it satisfy who you are um we spoke about this last time we met as well the the biggest reward for me right at the moment is being able to go for so far deep in a particular uh, problem space where as an entrepreneur, the value you bring to yourself right now is having that knowledge. Um, when we are working in companies, when we are working in like in our, in, our, in our departments, I still remember every time you have a problem, every time you don't know something, you go to your manager or you go to your, your, your first, uh, your, your, your supervisor and say, hey, like, what do we do here? Or what's, what's, your, what's the next step here? Every day, I don't know how next week's gonna look for me. And I, I just know that, okay, we're gonna be working on this particular uh, feature or this particular uh, aspect of, uh, of the product. Uh, or, you know, I have a set of sales calls which I have to go through this week, but I have no idea of how that outcomes are gonna um, uh, be, but I'm, I'm gonna be positive. Um, and so you're gonna reach a point in your entrepreneurial career where, you are going to be stepping into unknown territory where you want to start talking to people and people are going to tell you that, hey, we've actually also not encountered this problem. So we don't know how to solve it. Or we, we I don't know how to advise it. And many times, you know, sometimes when I go to my mentors and advisors, they're like, 
hey, Vinny, that's a, that's a new problem to me as well. I don't know. And so when you reach that point is when you get that satisfaction. Okay, wow, I am actually getting you know knowledge from a, 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 a part of the world where it's still unknown for a lot of many people out there. And that's when you know it really hits you like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm working on something cool and working on something which is going to bring value. Uh, and then if you get if you become successful in that unknown territory, the money is going to start following. And 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 um, you know that 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 excites me and that keeps me up at night. Wow. So um you're you're meant to do this, Denise. <laughs> yeah. What tell tell us about Y Combinator. People probably don't all know what that is, people on this call. So tell them what it is and and the acceptance rate, which is teeny. Um, I think 1.2%, something like that, of applicants, maybe it's 1.4, whatever, it's tiny. Um, how did you, what is it, and how did you manage to get into it? So White Combinator is, um, it's a very, very prestigious um, um, accelerator program, um, and they are, um, they fund startups from all stages, from, you know, ideas to, I know startups have also already raised their seed round getting Y Combinator. And um, it, the biggest asset to Y Combinator um, is they, they it's, it's, it's a, it is a four month long program where you, they, they select about um, in, in my batch, there were, there were about 375 companies, but I think they've reduced the batch size to so about 200 companies, which they select out of 20,000 applications. So, uh, it's the acceptance rate, as you as you mentioned, is is, is very um, very it's very competitive, and um, it's a four month program where you are put into this. I would my for me personally, I call it a pressure cooker. You are you know uh, you are expected to perform. Uh, I still remember uh, when we went through IC. Every time we thought we had good metrics, which showed that hey, our product is is performing this well, or we had these pilots to go back to them and say, uh, you know, we thought we did we did well, and they were like, no, go ten, go get ten more deals. So it's it's, it's essentially uh, that's the basic difference between an accelerator program and an incubator program. And so Y Combinator is an accelerator, and um, they once you're chosen, once you're accepted in the program, they they give you um, a um, um, a seed a pre seed funding to to keep get your company started. Uh, you have amazing mentors. Uh, who are going to be with you to the program. And coming back to the first point where I mentioned the biggest asset of the program is this global community of 6,000 other YC founders who are very entrepreneurial, very, very easy to get access to, and who are all rooting for each other. And so uh, for me, that is that was like the biggest takeaway is that I have access to all these founders in case I had run into a problem or if I need an introduction into a company. I have the YC community to sort of lean on, and uh, I I can't you know any any I, I encourage every person who has an idea you know be it healthcare not healthcare to apply to YC because it's it's just an amazing program. Yeah, so cool that you got into it. Um, just in our last couple of minutes here, to give us a little reflection on the course and how um, if it had an impact on what you're doing and what you've learned, what what was of value. Absolutely. The course was my first ever entrepreneurial, I guess, uh, activity, you could call it, because at that point, I was not even thinking to be an entrepreneur. I was just like, hey, I want to check this out and see what's what's in there and what's in it for me. Um, extremely, extremely helpful in um, building foundational concepts of starting a company. The, you know, uh, remember talking, having classes about, okay, what is an MVP? What is, what is, venture capital. Some people you know, still have to explain what VC is, uh, what is, you know, user discovery. And these are like startup terminologies, which are usually not very, uh, you know, uh, pretty ar 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 arcane to people. But uh, once, you know, it's through these class, which, uh, which helped me to understand, okay, these are the different steps when it comes to like building a product from scratch. And um, it, for me personally, I think there were two most important things, which which I had, um, which which for me was most valuable from the class was one, um, Stephanie, I think you brought some really, really good speakers uh, to our class um, from former founders to uh, people in VC um, who we as students could reach out to later and also like follow up on. And these were very immense lessons which they shared on during during their talks. 
And, and, the, and the second part for me was the community which the class created. Um, if you remember, I, uh, I went on after, the, after our class to create a, a weekly, a bi-weekly call uh, from our class alumni. And, 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 and I, was, uh, I was one of the group leads in the class. And so uh, the community was, so, um, was very diverse and had an incredibly smart set of professionals that I wanted to continue meeting them. And so I started my own uh, uh, bi-weekly call where some of our fellow members still continue to present their ideas and they brought in their friends and their friends brought in their friends. And so um, it was you know, good to have that community grow. And um, I, I can't recommend and, and this to recommend this more to anybody else to take up this class because that clearly set me on the right path to start my company. Okay, I think we might be done. Is that, yeah, end of the video, great. Um, just because we have very little time left, I wanted to open up any questions, discussion, you can just raise your hand um, and let us know what's on your mind. Ho hope that was helpful to hear from someone who's actually doing it now, do, being an entrepreneur, having participated in the class. So any questions? Um, okay, Ender, maybe put, can you like, put back uh, the, I think you have the link to, yes, for yeah. it, right, for registration if people are interested. And um, I guess I'd just like to thank everybody for coming. I, I'll stick around for a few minutes in case people would like an informal chat. And I, I see a couple of